So, Buck, tell me what's on your mind. Well, I really liked Keep Calm and Flutter on up until the ending, but then things got really rushed and Fluttershy started acting really dumb. So I'm just wondering if the problems with the ending are enough to ruin the whole episode. It's a similar problem I had with The Lion King. That's an awesome film until the last 15 minutes or so, but since the ending is a much smaller percentage of the entire film, it's not really that big a deal, at least not to me. But with Keep Calm and Flutter on, it's like about 20% of the entire episode. What specifically do you find about Fluttershy that made her start acting dumb? Taking her necklace off and not putting it back on after Discord messes everything up. Why do you suppose she did that? Or is it that you are unable to relate to her frame of mind here? I don't understand why she did it. But one other thing that bugs me is that Discord says he'll fix the problem with the dam and in return asks Fluttershy not to use her element. I take that to mean she won't use her element as long as he fixes things. He didn't fix it, so why does she still refuse to use it? Because to her, that's not the promise she made. To you, it may seem that way, and it is understandable as to why. If you listen to the dialogue, I don't really see how it could be interpreted any other way. It's that rather rushed turnaround of Discord's character that made the whole ending ruin the episode for me. So the thing I'm still not sure about is, is this poor rushed ending really enough to make the episode as a whole bad, when it had been so good up until that point? I can certainly see why Fluttershy would want to show that she trusts Discord. She has said that she is his friend, after all. The problem I see is the idea that Discord wants her to promise not to use her element. It's like me asking a friend of mine to never shoot me in the head. It's just not something a friend is likely to do anyway. I see that moment as Fluttershy being a friend to Discord, but not yet the other way around. At that moment, Discord really was only thinking about himself. It wasn't until he had that epiphany that he realized that he wanted Fluttershy to be his friend. Before then, he was still scheming. I think that was clear from the way that he was acting. Up to that point, Fluttershy was handling him quite well. But I think a better way to deal with the situation at the end would have been for her to say, I will only use it if you give me reason to. I suppose then Discord would have seen Fluttershy scheming against him, and not because she wanted to be his friend, which in turn would have worked against the whole reason she wanted to reform him in the first place. True, it would not have completely fixed the situation, but that starting point of do as I say and I'll be nice would have at least been something. Then over the course of time, Discord may have found that he actually doesn't mind doing nice things, if it means having Fluttershy as a friend. But instead, the entire process of him being reformed happens in this one scene. I would argue that it took that whole day for that epiphany to have been possible. Fluttershy had to be willing to show him kindness time and time again, despite his numerous attempts to be less than helpful. I think that's maybe the key to my problem here, because I didn't really see that. I saw Fluttershy saying that they were friends just to be nice, and Discord just went along with it. There wasn't really any moment of Fluttershy saying she'd be friends with him on the condition that he behave, or Discord really seeing anything to gain from them being friends. Has anyone ever shown you that amount of kindness, Buck? Being willing to do whatever it takes to show that they care for you and your well-being? Well, let me think. Does a parent count? In this case, yes, I think it does. Now, imagine Fluttershy acting like a mother here. She certainly does have the most nurturing spirit of all the main six. Imagine Discord as a rebellious child. Does seeing their conflict this way make you think any differently about it? So Fluttershy saying they are not friends is like a mother abandoning her child? Or is this part of some more elaborate plan? I know that Fluttershy had her moment of frustration, but she still wasn't willing to use her element against him. Even in her anger, she wouldn't give up on him. I don't really see what's going on then. I don't know if a mother's love for her child really means the same kind of thing as Fluttershy's being friends with Discord, because with a mother there isn't so much of a choice in the matter. I would also never think of a mother and a child being like friends. Well, let me think. To me, the fact that Fluttershy was willing to keep her promises even though Discord clearly intended to make things even worse shows that Fluttershy was having a crisis of conscience. I mean, look at the decision she had to make here. One could say that her friends were right all along and that Discord didn't deserve any kindness. And seeing all of his actions up to that point, the rest of the main six certainly had good reason to think that way. 
But we must also remember that Princess Celestia herself was the one who told Fluttershy that she needed to do this. Fluttershy may not have spent her youth learning from the princess like Twilight did, but we've seen time and time again just how much respect and reverence the citizens of Equestria give to their ruler. And having the nigh-immortal ruler of the land look you in the eye and say, I wouldn't ask if I weren't confident you could get him to use magic obediently of his own free will. What would you say to that? Celestia is certainly respected by the other ponies, but that doesn't mean she's always right. She clearly didn't have the right idea when she tried to fight Chrysalis with her magic. So she can make mistakes. I also don't think she ever told Fluttershy to take her necklace off. Fluttershy not only believed that what she was doing was right, but that Princess Celestia would not have given her this task in the first place unless she believed it would work. Even after Discord had made things worse, she would not let go of that belief. Because to Fluttershy, her virtue of kindness is something that she holds so deeply, and putting that aside would have crippled her from the inside out. If she had given up on Discord, listened to her friends, and turned him back into stone, not only would she have failed in something that she has dedicated her life to believing, but she would have also failed the princess who had faith in her. I believe that was more important to Fluttershy than what her friends were pleading with her to do. Well... I'm only suggesting that Fluttershy was going about trying to fix Discord in the wrong way. As for Discord's rather sudden change of heart, I actually believe that something so life-changing can happen so quickly. Even though Discord changed his ways over the course of one day, he is not the first villain to have a drastic change of heart over so short a time. When I look at Discord and Fluttershy in this episode, I am reminded of what happened in the classic tale of A Christmas Carol. I want you to compare Discord with Ebenezer Scrooge and Fluttershy with Bob Cratchit. Mr. Cratchit had been working with Scrooge for a number of years, having to deal with a very unsavory, miserly attitude about the world each and every day. Scrooge kept trying to tell others how foolish they were to believe in such things as charity, mercy, and a joyful Christmas spirit. But Mr. Cratchit kept his positive attitude throughout all of it. And on that one fateful night, Scrooge had a life-changing experience, much of that having to do with Bob Cratchit and his family. Because Mr. Cratchit held on to his virtues even in the face of so much hardship. And I see Fluttershy much the same way. She believed in her virtue so much that she would not let go of it. She had her moments of doubt and even her moments of frustration, but she kept the promise she made. And for Discord, that caused an enormous change of heart, and he realized that losing the friendship of the one pony who had ever shown him that much kindness was something that he could not bear. All because Fluttershy believed in her virtue. Does that make you think any differently about these characters, Buck? I can see some parallels with Scrooge in the sense that they both learned the value of being loved and respected by others, as well as the importance of having a positive effect on others though I would still argue that Scrooge had more time to think about these things and more information about the Cratchit's life and future. You have helped me to open my eyes to something else, though, that an offering of friendship does often help less social people to come out of their shell. I didn't have many friends at school, and I wasn't really very interested in socialising. Later in my life, though, I have met a lot of people that have wanted to socialise with me from the first time I've met them. And it did a lot to help my self-confidence around others, as well as give me a new desire to act more social towards new people. So it's possible that Discord is going through a similar change, but I would still like to point out that this change took me a couple of years, while with Discord it's one day. Well, I still believe that Fluttershy was doing what she believed was right, what Celestia instructed her to do, and in the end, it accomplished something that the rest of the main six could not believe. Discord never had a friend before that point, and even though he is still learning more about friendship in his own way, I don't believe that change would have been possible were it not for Fluttershy showing him such a deep well of kindness, patience, and understanding. Shall we continue on this next week? Yes, I think so. I think I'm starting to understand this now. This episode shows more than any other how true the subtitle of this show is. Discord felt the power of that more than any other character, and Fluttershy had the faith that that would happen. I knew there was something about this episode that I was missing. Thank you, Doc, for helping me to see it. Glad to hear it, Buck. I hope this helps others to see the episode a little differently as well. Enjoy your evening.
It's good to be helping.